The entirety of the internet pornography industry, as it exists today, is by its nature abusive. Abusive to the actors in it, abusive to the viewers, and most importantly, abusive to the children that view it. It is, of course, very well known that children from a very young age today view some of the most hardcore content imaginable. The average age for first exposure of boys is between 11 and 13, which means, of course, there are many boys who view this same content at even younger ages. Virtually all boys will view this content well below the age of consent. This very fact alone, the mass exposure of these sorts of videos to boys, is extremely abusive because, as I am sure we all know, 13, 11, 9-year-old boys cannot consent to these type of activities. Period. They can't. It's not possible. It's not something within their ability to do. And the entire industry relies on these boys being exposed to this content because the industry requires totally open internet access to this type of content so lots of people can view it and they can make lots of money off of ad revenue. The current safeguards that exist are none. Entering a number into a box is not a safeguard at all. If you want to maintain this access to a nearly unlimited supply of these videos, and for free, then you simply must accept that the mass abuse of the vast majority of our boys is a price worth paying. The way to stop this is simple. It would be to ban it. So, if you want to stop the mass abuse of our children, you should support banning these videos. We know that telling parents, la mau, be a good parent, isn't stopping children from viewing this content and thus being abused. So, clearly, a ban is necessary. The abuse of children certainly isn't the only reason to support such a ban, but I do think it's the most compelling. I've already made several videos on this topic where I made similar arguments. However, one of the most common responses I received was people saying, but what if the child consents? Okay, okay, now I know what people are going to say. They're going to say that I'm straw manning. No, no one actually said that exact phrase to me in those exact words. Because just putting it in those words reveals exactly how ridiculous this counter-argument is. However, what I did have many people saying to me is identical in meaning to the question, what if the child consents? They just put it in nicer sounding language. To put it closer to their actual words, people would say something along the lines of, yes, children cannot consent, but this content can't be abusive because children, they seek it out. They aren't forced to watch it. No one holds them down. They decide that they want to watch these things. I'm sure that it is very often true that children quote-unquote seek out this type of stuff, but that does not make a difference because children can not consent, period. Again, there's no expansion to this. There's no nuance. They can't. Certainly not nine-year-olds. Certainly not 11-year-olds. This should be obvious. When we say children cannot consent, we aren't saying that it's very difficult for children to consent to these types of things. We are saying that they simply do not have the mental and emotional maturity to do so, no matter the circumstances. So, Pointing out ways in which kids seek out this type of stuff has nothing whatsoever to do with whether or not these children are being abused. The only way in which this could not be abusive is if these children have the capacity to consent, which they do not. Let's analyze this argument a little bit further. It is also near identical to the language that abusers themselves use. He was very mature for his age. She wanted it. He started it, not me. These are the exact defenses that abusers use all the time, and they mostly come down to either claiming that children, one way or another, can consent in this situation, or claiming that they were really seeking it out. Are these people often lying when they use these defenses? Yes, probably. But that's besides the point. Because even if the child did literally initiate the interaction, it doesn't matter, because whatever the specific circumstances are, the child cannot consent. That is why we have age of consent in the first place. 
not because it is very common that young children will be abused, but because these types of relationships are by their very nature abusive. The circumstances, the apparent willingness, does not make a difference to that very fact. If we let children do whatever they want to do, they will make very bad decisions with that freedom, because the concept of freedom itself is meaningless to children. If you give a child the freedom to eat all the candy they want, they will destroy their bodies because they lack the inhibitions and the ability to understand the actions that adults at least have some ability to comprehend. However, even this idea in the first place, the idea that children normally seek out this type of content, is wrong. I remember, personally, the very first time that I viewed this sort of stuff. I was probably about eight years old, and there was a virus on my computer which made it pop up. In that case, I literally had zero say in viewing it. It was forced on me. And even after that first occurrence, several years later, I viewed similar things, again, not because I wanted to, but because every once in a while it was posted on an internet forum and I clicked on it without realizing what it was. Clearly, I was not seeking it out, and I did not and could not consent. That is, of course, just a single anecdote, though, just from my intuition, I would assume that that pattern is probably repeated among many other children. However, fortunately, we don't need to rely just on my intuition, because, according to a British study, over 60% of children from ages 11 to 13 view this type of content mostly unintentionally. And only 18% of these kids say that their viewing was intentional. The numbers are similar for older children, but mostly unintentional remains the largest response by far. So, even the argument that these children are seeking out this stuff is clearly incorrect. For many, probably most according to the data we have, these children are not seeking it out at all. Though, again, that doesn't even matter that much, because children cannot consent in the first place, but this entire counter-argument is based on a faulty premise. This all comes back to the same point. What is more important, protecting children and others from this abuse, or the freedom to flood the internet with a near-unlimited supply of this type of content? The status quo is that virtually the entirety of our boys will view this at a very young age, and the only realistic solution to prevent this from happening is by banning it. And I know what people will say, banning things doesn't work, remember prohibition. I've gone over this in more detail in prior videos, but in short, the fact is that that is wrong. Prohibition did significantly reduce consumption even according to libertarian anti-prohibition economists. And there are plenty of very illegal things on the internet, which the government and websites do a pretty good job at significantly reducing public access to. Is it possible to eliminate it totally? No, obviously not. But it is possible to make it significantly harder to access, just as there are plenty of things that are currently very hard to access, though certainly not impossible. And if we can make it significantly harder to access, then far fewer children will view it. As my good personal friend in Uendo Studios says, Like, do we really need to explain why stores put junk food you know you shouldn't buy right next to the checkout counter? Because the easier it is to do a thing, the more it happens. I also know I'll have plenty of people saying, Lamau, just be a good parent. Again, this argument is totally besides the point. Because I don't just care about my hypothetical future children. I care about the generation's worth of boys that are currently being abused right now. And we know that telling parents to just install a good filter, to be a good parent, is clearly not cutting it. So, some other type of action is necessary. We like to think that we're so big-brained and enlightened nowadays, but the reality is... This practice that we're doing is as old as time. We are sacrificing our children, just as many cultures and many civilizations have in the past, sacrificing them on the altar of our own gratification. Thank you very much for watching. Please donate to my Subscribestar if you enjoy these videos. 
I have several different rewards, and the more money I make from that will allow me to put more time into making this content. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and most importantly, please do share these videos with anyone who you think might find them interesting. Also, I'll be having a stream this Saturday with the Distributist, Charlemagne, and Endeavor at 5pm EST. Thanks, and bye.